Today we'll be learning about each of Newton's three laws of motion. My name is Mr. Wilbur and I teach 8th grade science. Newton's first law states that an object at rest stays at rest or an object in motion stays in motion until an unbalanced force acts upon it. This is also called the law of inertia. In the video below, you can see that there's a car. Inside the car is a test dummy, and the car is running into a wall. In the first part of the video, the test dummy is not wearing a seat belt, and there is no airbag. Even though the car is going to stop into the wall, what is going to happen to the person inside the car if Isaac Newton's first law says an object in motion will stay in motion? So even though the car stopped, we see that the person inside the car does not stop. He's going to continue to move until something makes him stop. And in this case, it was the front windshield. This is why we are to wear seat belts and have airbags. So here's an airbag and a seat belt. Much different than the first video. Much safer. So here are the two videos compared side by side. Object in motion, staying in motion. An object in motion stays in motion. So here are a few funny videos from a popular TV show on MTV called Ridiculousness. This is a segment called Ghost Holes where people are falling into what they say is imaginary holes, but really they're just tripping over their feet. Even though their feet get tripped up and stopped on the ground, notice what happens to the upper body of these people. Object in motion stays in motion. Let's see another example. The feet get stopped, but the upper body continues to move as it crashes forward. This happens in vehicles as well, and the person continues to fly. Object in motion, skateboard stops, but the person on the skateboard continues to fly off. Object in motion, staying in motion. An object at rest stays at rest. In this video, you will see a coin placed on top of a card, which is on top of a cup. The coin will remain at rest if the card is pulled fast enough. An object at rest stays at rest. Again, we see an object at rest staying at rest. This time, we see a cup, plate, silverware, and bowl at rest on a table. When the tablecloth is pulled quick enough, the objects at rest stay at rest. Newton's second law is the law of force and acceleration. It's summed up by the equation force equals mass times acceleration. More mass means more force. More acceleration also means more force. So, if you want to stop something that has a lot of mass, is really heavy, and is coming towards you, you're going to need a lot more force. It's the same if you want to move it. You're going to need more force because it has more mass. However, if it has less mass, it's going to take less force to stop it. If something's moving really, really, really fast, it's incre increasing its speed, has a large acceleration, you're going to need a lot of force to stop it. The same goes if you're going to want to push it with more acceleration. You're going to need more force to push it. So, we can see this in the following video of a piano being dropped off the top of a dormitory. On the ground is another piano. So they're going to drop a piano onto a piano. So, let's watch this occur. So, if you were to drop a tennis ball off the top of this building, 
Do you think it would hit the piano with as much force as this piano did on top of the piano? Well, no, because more mass is going to give you more force. This is why we see so much force hitting into this piano on the ground. We literally dropped a piano on top of the piano. That's a lot of mass, so it means a lot of force. More mass means you need more force. If I pick up a light cup, it requires less force. If I pick up a bucket full of water, it requires a little more force. If I pick up a hammock, it's a little heavier, more mass, means a little more force. If I pick up a full trash can, it's a lot of mass, so it's a lot more force needed. If I try to pick up this wooden beam, it's too much force for me required to move all that mass, so it's not going to move. The same goes for the world record blob holder. Blob is pretty much a giant inflatable object like you see here. And what someone's going to do is they're going to jump off the top of a very high object, being the thing you see over here on the right, onto the blob and somebody is going to be laying on the other end of the blob. So someone's going to jump off this high little cliff onto the blob and shoot someone off the other side into the water. Well, if you want to shoot off with more force, then you're going to need someone with more mass to jump off the other end to shoot you further. More mass gives you more force. If you want to shoot with just a little bit of force because you're scared to go up real high, then you want someone with less mass. If you want to shoot off the end of this really, really fast and your speed increase really, 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 really fast, then you're going to need someone with a lot of force. If you want to come off of this with less acceleration, it means you're not speeding up as fast, you're going to need someone with a lot less um, force. There we go. Wow. Let's see it one more time. More force, more mass, more force. There you go. So we actually had three guys jumping off of that to shoot that guy that high. Much, much more mass to shoot him off with more push into the air. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The most common example we see of this is a rocket ship. The engine thrusts downward, and there is an equal and opposite reaction. That forces the rocket to blast upward. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. The same thing occurs if you blow up a balloon and let go of the air. The air blows out one direction while the balloon flies off another direction. There is an equal and opposite reaction. Every action is followed by a reaction. Push on the wall. Notice there is an equal and opposite reaction. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. This will be demonstrated using Newton's cradle. We'll start by dropping one of the silver balls. Equal and opposite. Watch what happens in the remainder of the video as we change the number that we drop.
For each of these examples, the reaction is always equal and opposite. Nothing happens when you do five. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> Here's where you can find some of the YouTube videos seen in this presentation. The other videos were created by myself.